It's the Cool Kids Club. You've been invited to the Cool Kids Club. It's so exciting, yeah. Justin likes monsters, yeah. And Amy likes words in the Cool Kids Club. Cool, cool Kids Club. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Cool Kids Club. Uh, my name is Amy, and I am here with my brother. Oh, I didn't know. I'm Justin. I yeah, didn't know. <laughs> that, that's, that was your cue. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I was supposed to, like, finish your sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, that's wanna... the vibe we're going with today. Oh, okay. Uh, do you want... Let's... let's, let's well, you just want to take it back? Let's rewind it a little, and let's try that again, and I promise I'll be smoother this time. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So, you are who? Uh, I'm Amy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you are... Oh, I'm Justin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm Justin. We're the host is... of the... We're the hosts of this podcast. <laughs> yes. That, um, that this you're is currently cool, listening to. This is the Cool Kids Club podcast, uh, episode yeah. three. Uh, we are talking about... Uh, <laughs> I can just see the look on Amy's face already. <laughs> just, she like can't help but smile. I'll let you introduce the topic. This is... Uh, this is this is one that I know you want to do since this podcast for was me. like an inkling of an idea. Yeah. Uh, today we're talking about the Babysitters Club, guys, mm-hmm. and uh, and we're gonna we're gonna talk mostly about the book series. But of course, there have been a lot of things since those original series. We are gonna talk about those. That is not to say there won't be future episodes. Again, going more in depth, maybe on the movie or the show or something like that. Cool. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, cool. very cool. Super I'm not cool. watching it again. I'm not watching the movie again. You can't. Oh yeah, it. Justin watched the movie. Um, yeah, uh-huh. Hey, I, say I did it. You gave that a three out of five on Letterbox. Well, 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 Don't well, listen. It has a, It definitely has a charm to it. And I am yes. not. Go- I'm not going to. Uh, so I know nothing out of. Mm-hmm. I, I I knew nothing about the Babysitters Club outside of it was. It's a book series about babysitters and their adventures and and that you had a bunch of them and liked them but that that's really the extent of my knowledge and and of course i i, I haven't read any of them but uh mm-hmm. but i have watched the movie now and we will talk yep. about the movie because so, he needed a bit of a familiarity with the characters you know mm-hmm. um also you tell me what you thought the book series was about like before we watched the movies you told me or the movie, I'm sorry. You told me, you were like, oh, it's literally a club. You didn't think it was actually a club. Well, right? no, I mean, I guess I thought it, I, I mean, I guess I knew it was a club. I didn't know it was so structured. Like, it's yeah, very. Yeah, like there's officers and. <laughs> yes, it's way more official than what I thought mm-hmm. it was. I thought the Babysitter's Club was just like the name of the series. And it was about a bunch of girls mm-hmm. who babysat. And their adventures and yeah, friendships and stuff. Like I didn't know it was like, like the Knights like of Columbus literal- or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they pay dues and everything. It's legit. Uh, yeah, it, no, I it remember, really is it, more uh, so than I anticipated. There's a lot yeah. more legalese than I imagined. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Contracts drawn up. It's all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so what we're going to do is I'm going to jump in and talk a little bit about the book series um, and kind of like how we've been doing these episodes. We're going to talk history a bit and then we're going to kind of talk about the legacy of the Babysitter's Club and we're going to do a little fun bit at the end where no, Justin... No, 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 no. It's going to be a surprise. You know? It's going to be a surprise. Well, I wanted we, people to be percolating and thinking about what they thought about well, it. But okay. We, just, we, we Twitter painted them and now they're percolating. And now they can just <laughs> wait till the end of the episode and find out what. Okay. The, it's, I hope you're it's not, Twitter painted. Yeah. I mean, okay. It's not, that, it's not that exciting. So It, well, it could be. Um, okay. <laughs> Let's talk books. All right. All so, right. All right. So the idea for the Babysitter's Club. Um, which started in 1986. That was when the first book was published. So I wasn't even born yet. Justin was a year old. Um, the original series uh, came from an editor at Scholastic. Be out um, here telling because people my age. We've talked about when we were born. Have we I mean, already? St- it, we have. Now, are you going to interrupt the whole time? or? Just- yeah, probably, because I got nothing else to say. Great. Great, Please, great. go on. All Proceed. right. Um, so 
there was a novel called Katie's Babysitting Job that Scholastic had put out and it did incredibly well. And so this editor, Jean Fowle, she saw that and was like, hey, what if we did a whole series about babysitters? Um, so Anna M. Martin, who, if you don't know, was the creator and writer of the Babysitters Club. Um, she did get the idea from this editor. Um, she was contacted and then she kind of took that general idea and created all the characters, the plots, and the whole setting uh, for the series. So originally it was going to be a four book series, but of course the four, first four books were very successful. Scholastic added two more, then 12 more, and then, you know, the rest is history. Um, so when the last official book was published was 2000, so these ran from 1986 to 2000. Um, there had been those are, the good, those are the good years. Those are the good years. It's those been downhill years, after yeah. that. I mean, really. Yes. Um, so at that point, so in 14 years, is that right? In 14 years, 213 novels were published. Now, now, okay. Did did okay? So Anna Martin, and, and I'm mm-hmm. gonna I'm gonna play the role here of someone who doesn't know anything about Babysitters Club. Because uh, that's what yeah. I am. And yeah. if any of our listeners are also in that role, I can maybe mm-hmm. ask some questions. So, Anne M. Martin, this is, that's yeah. 213 novels. And yes, they're kids' novels, but they are novels. Did she write all of these, or did they get ghostwriters and stuff? So, she says she thinks she wrote about 60 to 80 oh, of, okay. of those of, 213. Of yeah. Oh, wow. So, because, um, so yeah, most, you know, most a lot of them of... were written by ghostwriters. Yeah, probably. And I would, mm. I'm sure she wrote a lot of the, the first, you know, probably 20, 25. I don't know. But, um, right. you know, before they started getting really popular and having to, you know, I'm sure they were pumping those out every couple months. Um, and so very similar to uh, Goosebumps, which we will talk about. You know, we know yes, that R.L. Stein. we will. Uh, R.L. Stein did not, uh, you know, actually write all of them. Uh, but I do, I do feel like Anna M. Martin kind of uh, mapped out like a general idea of where she wanted things to go, and maybe pitched ideas for uh, for future so these books. These are just more, written. and I guess in my head, uh, thinking about this, I, I feel like in my head that it was like kind of self-contained stories, but it feels like they are like connected. Like you have like long-term kind of stories. Whereas, do you? Po- do you? Because like. Going going back to Goosebumps would probably be the thing I would compare it to, right? Um, just uh, from what I read when I was a kid, um, you know, every book unless it was a sequel, mm-hmm. you know, is it's you different. Know, it's like an anthology. Monster Blood doesn't have of. anything to do with, you know, mm-hmm. say cheese and die <laughs> or right. whatever. You know, they're no, yeah, they're all self contained. Yeah, this is definitely, um, you know, there are overarching stories. Um, it's all set in Stony Brook, Connecticut. It was a fictional town. Um, and you don't really leave that. I mean, there are some spinoff series we'll talk about, but, um, everything is set there. Is this the like childhood version of what would be for you when you were a teen, the town from Gilmore Girls, whatever that's called? Stars uh, Hollow. Stars Hollow, which is also in Connecticut. Which is also in Connecticut. Um, I don't think Stony Brook is quite, Yes. Uh, I don't think Stony Brook is qu- is described as being quite as tiny and quaint as Stars Hollow, but yes, very, um, uh, very much the same vibe. Like, oh, this sweet little town uh, where nothing nothing really bad ever happens. Um, right. So let's talk a bit about um, the characters, the main crew. Now, uh, yes. now, like I said, Justin watched the movie. Um, and I want to get, uh, I feel like they do a pretty good job in the movie of like individualizing these characters, telling you who they are. So first initial reactions, who do you think would be your favorite character in the club? Justin, when you watch the movie, who do you think is your fave? Well, and and you're, you're going to have to forgive me cause I'm not That's as, okay you know, up to speed if I say, oh, Christy, that's the tomboy one, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well. With daddy issues. Yeah. Not her. 
She's not uh, my favorite either. Okay, Marianne. She's kind of the preppy one. That's uh, is that um? That was Rachel Ra- Lee Rachel Cook. Le- Rachel in the Lee movie. Cook. Yes. Okay. With the weird, with the little haircut. Yeah. 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 She was okay. Uh, yeah. Claudia is the is okay. Which one's Claudia? Claudia is the oh, one she who's is, really uh, artsy. Okay, and she's like uh, like uh, Japanese American, right? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, okay. Uh, and Stacey, she's the one who's bad at science. She's and they bad do at the... science. I'm gonna let you like kind of really describe. Oh these yeah, characters I'll go as through I'm go- all of them. Yeah, sort of going down the list here. Stacy, uh, which one's Stacy? Stacy's the one who has diabetes and was going out with the older guy, and they go to New uh, York City. Oh yeah, remember? Okay. Yeah. And he's can, like, I pick, uh, can I pick? Can I pick Dawn because isn't Dawn Larissa Ol- Olenek? Or yes, how do you say her name? Olenek, yeah. O- Olenek, Larissa Olenek. Yeah, uh, I'll pick Dawn because of a childhood crush on Larissa Olenek. Yeah. Um, due to Alex Mack, so mm-hmm. uh, I'm gonna go with Dawn. I'm gonna go with Dawn. Also, I, uh, I would talk uh, probably Mallory, uh, and we'll talk about why yeah <laughs> yeah uh dawn was my favorite growing up oh so, okay dawn was always my favorite uh even in the like before the movie came out and then when the movie came out i was super excited because i loved larissa olenic from alex mack and she was so you okay, so i was like okay. oh man it's perfect my favorite character alex mack's playing my favorite character so it was just like a perfect so dawn was, was already ki- my it favorite. was kismet it was it was so. Well, okay, why don't so you kind of go Dawn. and like, yeah? Okay. Why don't you kind of go ahead and uh, take us through about the main him. characters since since you're so uh, yeah. Uh, but let's go back to the top end. So for those of you, you're who never gonna let familiar, me live that down. What that we had you're the same gonna, favorite? Yeah, you're gonna bring that up a lot. I feel like. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you're, <laughs> if you're not familiar. Uh, with the Babysitters Club, so the fi- the founder and president uh, was Christy Thomas, and Christy is just like Justin was saying, she's a real tomboy. She loves playing baseball. Um, she comes from a big family, and uh, she's got a lot of daddy issues because her dad left when she was a kid. That's a huge uh, like character trait for her is that she she really does have a lot of problems with that. And early in the series, her mom remarries, and she has like you know struggles with that and so that's another thing that they really tackle is that whole like you know being being 13 years old your mom's going to get remarried to someone else uh and you're going to gain like a stepdad and step siblings and and all that so that well was and her She's dad real... in the movie he's a real piece of work he he is your classic like deadbeat 90s dad yeah uh he, and frankly, there are red flags everywhere, Christy. Like, ev- he's I mean, living in like a van, basically. Down by the river. like Down by the river. So in the strike woods. One. Uh, strike one. Sad he's divorce to dad to your dinner. Mom, so strike two. Oh, yeah. He won't let her say, yeah. Yep. You it's, know. It's really all bad. Christy, I think, learned a big lesson. Uh, and She does I, like flannel and overalls. She likes flannel. She likes overalls. She likes hats. She, yes, she likes flannel and stripes together. She dresses a lot like Alex Mack, but without the finesse of Alex Mack or the ability to turn into silver goo. Is she? A, is she? At least in the movie, is she a poor man's Alex Mack? Um, y- yeah. I'm or would Alex say, Mack be a poor man's Chris? Alex Mack is a poor man's no one. Okay. Like. <laughs> I can't wait till this just becomes an Alex Mack fan cast. Yeah, actually, this episode's about Alex Mack, apparently. And um, my friend Eddie Jenkins convinces me to let him host the show, because he loves her, too. Oh, well, it's great. She's great. <laughs> um, Now I just want to... I'm going to pop in my DVDs, The Secret World of Alex Mack, after this, and watch them. Um, so, anyway, uh, Christy is real bossy and boyish, um, and most likely a lesbian they don't ever say that but let's face it like she 100 percent is um she has a should we she say has not a that there's anything wrong with that or is that just it's obvious that there's not anything wrong with that oh i should say there's obvious there's nothing wrong with that yeah yeah uh, okay. obviously I just want to um 
No, I was just saying that it's like, I feel like people who read Babysitter's Club are kind of like, yeah, Christy 100% right. is yeah. is gay. She plays we just, softball. you know, it's not canon. Yeah, she, you know, uh, she doesn't. We, we really, don't have to go any further. She, <laughs> we can just well, move on. Well, I was on. just going to say that she, um, she does have like a love interest in the books. It's a kid named Bart, and he is the rival. Or Harley Jarvis? Uh, no, not Bart Harley Jarvis. He's Harley pretty, Jarvis? He's pretty young for her. Yeah. He's he's bit, mere he's months baby. old. Eat a baby. Um, but that nothing really ever happens there. You know, mm-hmm. some of them do have boyfriends and stuff. Um, then you have Marianne. She is the secretary of the group. She's the one who in the movie is Rachel Lee Cook. Um, and she is very quiet, very sensitive, very shy, she cries easily. Her dad, um, I mean, she just does. She's just a withering flower. Of she a really, just, she just really wilting. is wilting. Yeah, uh, and her dad is her. Her mom died when she was young, so it's just her and her dad. And her dad kind of babies her and wants her to like stay really young and like not let her do stuff. So he like doesn't let her stay out as late as the other babysitters, and it's like a whole thing. Mary Ann is a bit of a stick in the mud and I never loved Marianne. Uh, and I yeah, would always seems feared a bit, uh, that I was Marianne. Yeah. She seems a, like a <laughs> bit of a drama queen. Like she's just, everything is, everything is like, Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry to any Marianne. Like, everything's fans a whole out there. big deal. Just like, it's oh, a whole yeah. thing. Marianne is, seems feeling. very, she's very put upon by the world. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and she has a steady boyfriend, uh, through most of the series, uh, Logan Bruno and Logan actually is important because he becomes a like, so, honorary... so we have Bart, we have Bart Taylor and Logan Bruno, mm-hmm. Bart okay. Harley Jarvis and <laughs> Logan Bruno. Do Logan... all the, do, do all the boys in, in Babysitter's Club have two first names? <laughs> Um, I think those are like the only big ones. So yes, <laughs> um, go. there you go. Uh, so Logan is he becomes an associate member of the Babysitters Club l- way later in the series, and he's the only male member. Um, so he's associate important. Associate member. Uh, so well, that, what does associate member mean? So I think see, this is what I'm talking about thing, with like the it has a whole like corporate hierarchy structure, like they does. have like a board of directors <laughs> and committees. And yeah, board of trustees, task forces. And- uh huh. Um. Yeah. They. Uh... Oh, that's my train of thought. What is an associate member? <laughs> what does that mean? I, okay. Thank you. An he associate helps member. Them I think it's just like a. I don't get it. They don't. An associate member doesn't necessarily have to be at like every single meeting. They kind of fill in when other babysitters maybe can't or out of, out of town or they're short on someone. They kind of can come in and help, but they're not expected to be at every single meeting. That's what an associate member is. That's what I'm gonna say. It is. Okay. That's Sounds what we're good. saying. Uh, right. Next is Claudia. And we talked about Claudia being uh, really artsy. She loves fashion. Uh, she is a second generation Japanese American. Um, and that is like important to her uh, character and her personality. And she does live with her parents and her sister and her grandmother, Mimi, who is just adorable and sweet. And I love any stories that have to do with Mimi. Um, so the meetings are always in Claudia's room. So Claudia is really important in that sense because that's where they actually get to have their meetings. And I will say the meetings are in Claudia's room because in 1986, Claudia is the only one with her own phone line in her room. That's how they decided that. Oh, Because nice. she had her own phone and they were like, well, well it makes we sense. can just give that. No, it makes sense. Uh, one of my favorite things about Claudia is that she loves junk food and she would stash junk food all around her room because her parents were like health nuts and like in the movie you saw she has like a false book that she would open uh-huh. up and there'd just be candy in it um, and I just remember as a kid thinking that's, that was so that's cool the, that's the dream right there right I just remember reading that as all a my kid. books and fill them with candy yeah look, yeah look at all the books behind me I can hollow out with candy I mean once you've read it it's just yeah. a candy it's just, just, just it's just candy storage after that yeah exactly that's what I always say. There's a whole bookshelf full of candy. 
Um, <laughs> okay, moving on. Stacy is the treasurer. Uh, she is the one who was dating the older guy in the movie. Yes. And Stacy's big thing at the beginning is that she is uh, diabetic, and it's part of the reason that she leaves uh new york there's a thing with like some kids at school it doesn't go well anyway so she's like trying to figure out her new life as like a type one diabetic and how that affects her she's also boy crazy um she is that's like one of her biggest things um she is very good with money which is why she was made the treasurer um and she's like very fashionable from new york all that. But she's not, like, pretentious or anything. I think I didn't like Stacy growing up because I thought, mm, Stacy's probably far too cool for me. <laughs> like, I'm more of a Dawn kind of girl. But really, I was I think that says man. more about you than it does about Stacy, though. Oh, I fully agree. It's not Stacy's yeah. fault. <laughs> no. It's my own insecurities. It's, it's not on Stacy. She's all right. So those are the main four that started the club. Um, okay. And then... A couple books in, Dawn appears, um, and she has moved out of nowhere. Just like, yeah, just apparates. Okay, um, cool. <laughs> no, Maybe I will she like these. <laughs> she moves from California with her mom. Her parents had gotten divorced. Her dad's still out in California, and she moves there with her mom. Um, and she's very like crunchy hippie, uh, very environmentally you know like granola she's very, like, e- yeah she's very granola she's very eco-friendly um but it, at a time where that was mm, less pretentious as it is now i don't know again this was i like, think you are misremembering 80s and 90s it, well environmentalism was huge sure um i guess i but did we think it was like pretentious of people to be like real crunchy and vegan then i don't know I was too young to be paying attention to it, um, probably. Yeah. That's too yeah. late. That's too late. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess that's I just too, loved Dawn anyway. Yeah, I would say after, like, 1982. No. Okay. Nah. Well, I liked Dawn because she was a hippie. Uh, and if you'll recall, when I was young, I really was very into that 60s, 70s uh, culture and fashion. Um, you know, if I wasn't dressing like Alex Mack. So, you have Dawn, uh, and she kind of rounds out, like, the main crew. And then you have two junior officers named Mallory and Jesse, and they get added on a little later. Um, They're a year younger than everybody else. Everyone else is in seventh grade at the beginning. They are in sixth. Um, And Mallory actually used to be babysat by them because she is a big, loud car driving by. Sorry, (laughs) y'all. She is the oldest of like eight kids and so they used to get babysitters for all of them and now she's old enough she's a babysitter so now mallory is... is the one in the movie where she's the little one who has the curly red hair right yes 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 and she dresses like uh diane keaton <laughs> she's got like this is a lot yes. of like wire rim glasses and suspenders uh-huh. and ties and yeah bow ties and ties button-ups yeah um she does she does dress like diane keaton <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, so you liked Mallory I like her. In the I movie. like her. She's a good one. Yeah. Mallory. Um, every time I take any kind of quiz or anything, I always end up being a Mallory because Mallory loves to read. Much to your chagrin, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, Mallory's a bit annoying and I know I am too. So I just have to just like accept. Like, I, I get it. I'm annoying. Um, so that's your crew. Uh, okay. I'm not going to get into like, you know, like I said, Logan was an associate member. Shannon... Uh, and Abby, they were also members. Uh, Abby go is added later on after Dawn moves back to California. So you also, so you had the 213 books that also included super specials, mysteries. Oh my God, I love the mysteries, Justin. They're so good. Super <laughs> mysteries. Oh. Which were extra long mysteries. And then they had these books they called Portrait Collection. Uh-huh. And they were like pretending as if they had this class assignment where they had to write their own autobiography. Okay. And so each one would be like, you know, Marianne like writing for this class assignment, like her autobiography. Um, okay. 
And then there were a couple of special edition books that were called Reader's Request. And those came out later and they were focused on Logan and Shannon, who were like, you know, members that were added later on. Okay. So you had you had quite a so few it's all, different you, you, kinds. So you have different series within those 213? Kind of, yes. You kind had of? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is. Because you've got the original run, and those are all, you know, numbered through. Right. And then um, you've got, yeah, super specials, mysteries, super mysteries, all those that are also numbered their own separate thing. So, yeah, you've got, like, series within that one but you're still following the same characters so the super specials would always be like big trips or something like um i remember there's one was there one where they go like work at a resort in hawaii or something that's saved by the bell oh yeah that was a good (laughs) but actually maybe malibu sands i remember the name malibu sands malibu Um, sands there is one where they take like a bus trip around the United States. There's a big beach oh, one. Oh, that sounds horrible. There's like a New York City one. Like there's there's just a bunch. Um, the mysteries, of course, are all a little spooky. Oh, so sure. I like the mystery ones. I love they definitely have some Halloween themed ones. Not just mysteries, but just regular books. Um, and I do nice. think they have a couple Christmassy themed ones as well. Uh, if you don't know us in in real life, Justin and I are very into Halloween and Christmas. So. Yeah, they'll uh, find out soon enough if they don't know. That's right. Uh, so before I talk about any of like the spinoff type series, do you have anything you want to like interject with, have clarification on, talk about? No, like I said, I just didn't realize it was uh, like a structured organization. It's just, it's kind of funny to me, like how I like yeah. how structured. It's like it has a, it's like it should have like a like a militant wing. <laughs> like, they, like they should have like a security for like there's like committees and subcommittees um yeah you know this there's is like a bunch yeah. of leslie nopes that just want to like mm. like mm-hmm. just you know they love doing like red tape and paperwork and stuff <laughs> the thing is is they're definitely not all like that but christy thomas is uh and she okay. created it so she was like you know they're, they definitely like claudia couldn't give a shit uh don doesn't care like the, a lot of them are like you know whatever uh, right but chris christy is the Leslie but it's very Nopes. organized it's very it is very organized structured and i th- i think that appealed to me because i do like that level of like organization with like right. you know my job and things like that because i'm a big nerd uh <laughs> so before we talk about the shows and the movies um, of which Justin may have, you know, some more to say. Uh, I do want to talk about the kind of spinoff series. So you have, I don't know if you would consider this a spinoff. So this is called Babysitter's Club Friends Forever. And this actually was the last run. They considered it from 99 to 2000. I don't know why exactly it's separate from but also kind of included in the original run it's 12 books and it's where the babysitters club are finishing up and graduating from eighth grade they start off in seventh grade and this is the end of eighth and them going into high school and that is where the series ends but for some reason those last 12 books are called friends forever um and it is the end of the like overall series is it like a contained story or is it just they just called you know i don't know um i've not read those and i don't think i have any of those oh okay um so for those of you listening i have a pretty large babysitter's club collection um i I which we may be sharing which i may be sharing with you all with all of you lovely listeners i would say i maybe have like 70 to 80 that's a lot though so, I mean, you know, there's 213, so I don't, you know, mm-hmm. I don't even have half, but uh, I do have a pretty big selection, but I don't think I have any of the Friends Forever ones. So, you know, I don't know if it is just self-contained or if they just wanted to make the ending something like extra special. So they called uh-huh. it something different, maybe, um, to kind of signify that it was the end and they were going to be friends forever, you know. Um, yeah. So... I do want to talk a little bit about the Babysitter's Club Little Sister series, which started in 1988, and it followed Christy's younger stepsister, Karen, who I think at the beginning of the book is maybe like eight. I started getting into Babysitter's Club because of this series. 
Um, so the original the original books they're in middle school, right? They're like in seventh grade. Uh-huh. Um, and when I was a kid, six, seven, whatever, um, I couldn't relate to any of that. So they had started the Little Sister series, and I got into reading those, and that got me familiar with the whole you know, world, whatever. And then I started reading the ones for the older kids when I got a little bit older. Yeah. Uh, so those had 122 books total in that. Um, and I have no idea. Yeah, I know. I have no idea how many Anna and Martin wrote of those. But quite a few, I would say. Um, are you surprised there's this many books? Did you think it was a smaller series? Um, No. I mean, I guess not. I mean, that, that sounds about right. I knew it was a pretty big thing that went on for a long time so yeah i mean I think I was like surprised. like i said my, my my main comparison would be goosebumps and it you know there aren't yeah, maybe how many aren't, were those? What, not um, quite 100 goosebumps right well the the original run is 62 but then there have been other series since then oh okay like so i don't know spin off or like special type series it's in the hundreds i'm sure yeah hmm yeah oh don't, we're gonna talk all about that don't worry oh yes <laughs> um, so most importantly to me and maybe to some of you out there, um, because Dawn was my favorite character, um, she does move away, uh, from Stony Brook. She goes back to California to live with her dad at a certain point. And, uh, they do a spinoff series. It started in 1997 and ran to 2000 and it was called California Diaries. There were only 15 books. They were all written in diary format. And it followed Dawn and her California friends. So, like, the first book would be from Dawn's point of view. And then I think there were, like, four other characters you'd have point of views from. And so the next book would be, I don't remember what, one of them's name was Ducky. I remember, like, from Pretty in Pink. So, like, one of them would be from his point of view. And then the next one. And then they'd go back around and do a Dawn book. Um, And these definitely were, like, a little bit more mature. uh, Probably more, like late middle school early high school um like I definitely remember them like going and drinking at a party and getting sick like that kind of stuff so definitely not stuff that was happening in babysitter's club books um right so those were I don't want to say darker necessarily but they definitely were like well darker compared to the original ones sure they were definitely a little more mature um and I think like one of the characters deals with like anorexia or something you know so they're definitely more like right. probably high school aged and everybody's I starting to get horny them. oh god they're so horny they're so very horny um and you know i think it was like ooh, it's california it's like gritty i think they were trying to be like you know California's not gritty it. it's shiny i know uh well i'm sure parts of it are pretty gritty. Uh, yeah i take that back what am i saying yeah <laughs> Uh, but those, I loved those and I have quite a few of those as well, but there were only 15 to begin with. Um, and as with anything, uh, babysitters club has tons of merchandise that came out. They had dolls like, like bigger than, well, I think they had ones that were like Barbie doll size and then they had ones that were like a little bit bigger. Um, so you could get a doll of your favorite babysitter. Bigger than a Barbie? Like a, like a baby doll kind of size? Uh, not quite baby doll, somewhere in between, but I okay. think they had some that were also more like Barbie doll sized. Um, okay. they had board games. Don't you think I've not almost bought those on eBay? Oh, sure. Uh, there were puzzles, there were computer games, I'm trying to get a hold on that. You think you could find anything that would play a computer game from like 1997? <laughs> There's probably an emulator online, I'm sure. Probably, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, computer games, all kinds of merchandising. Uh, yeah, you'll have to let us know, um, if you're listening, let us know on social media if you had any of the merchandise. Like, if you had any. Now, see, I remember, uh, I feel like, I, I just remember, because I feel like you had a bunch of the bookmarks. I remember the bookmarks. Oh yeah, and I think they, they kind definitely, of. Yeah, I think they made some in that like some of them came in the books sometimes that you like yes. tore out. Yes, and I, I kind of remember they would have like an animated or like you know kind of like the cover version of the mm-hmm. character, and then you'd flip it mm-hmm. around back, and it had like the actor, like the character from the movie. Oh yeah, they absolutely. There were all kinds of movie. I remember lots of bookmarks. Uh huh. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because really, I feel like if you liked the Babysitter's Club, you were a bit of a nerd, and that's fine. So they definitely knew who they were. Like they were like planners, like student planners and notebooks and and like yeah. they they knew who they were marketing to. Yeah. Puzzles, you know, indoor kids, you know. Right. So there was <laughs> like, a TV like show in the '90s, right? There was a TV show in the '90s. Um, See, and, I didn't know that. Really? I don't know that I knew that there was a movie until I watched it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, there was a show. So, the, well, there's two shows. The first show was in 1990. Uh, it only had 13 episodes. They were 30 minutes. Uh, it only ran from January to March 1990. So very um, short period of time. And it originally was on HBO. Isn't that strange? That is strange. Right. Right. Um, it was produced by Scholastic, but it was on HBO. So they also aired it on the Disney Channel, which makes much more sense, and Nickelodeon. Mm-hmm. And then they had reruns from 94 to 97 on Disney. And I would be remiss if I did not talk about the theme song. And we're going to listen to the theme th- song. Has it got a good theme song? It's got a great theme song, and I legit get it stuck in my head. I mean, it's it's like very late 80s, early 90s, but we're... We're going to listen to it right now. Yeah, let's take a listen. Now that 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 does kind of slap. It does slap, doesn't it? It's got a hook. It's got a hook. I mean, I, I I've been caught singing it. Scott, my husband's been caught singing it. It's it's catchy. It's probably the most memorable thing. Babysitters Club. Babysitters Club. Say hello to the people who care. Say hello to your friends. Babysitters Club. Yeah, I mean, it's uh. It's lit, as the kids, <laughs> the thank kids you, would say. Thank you for that. Don't say lit. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the movie. Uh, I've seen the movie. Let's talk about the movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was the show. Uh, let's talk about the movie. I think this movie is a delight. It, I mean, it's very 1995. It's very... Um, I feel like... I mean, it's, I feel it's clearly geared towards young girls, but anybody. Anybody can enjoy it. Um... And, I enjoyed I it as as like kind of a time capsule of the time. You know, I mean, clearly it really a, thir- a 30-something-year-old man is not the target audience for this movie. Sure. Uh, so, you know, it's like, you know, it's not, I don't have a nostalgia for it. So it's probably not one I'm going to go back and rewatch unless you no. make me. Uh, but <laughs> uh, it, was, it was fascinating. Uh, it was a nice little um, microchasm, microcosm, I feel like, of 1995. Yeah. It really is. Uh, Particularly with the fashion. Yes, the fashion in this movie. Uh, Well, let's back up for a moment and just say, um, well, we've talked talked about the movie already, but uh, it did have Laura Solinik played Dawn, Skylar Fisk played Christy, who is uh, not known for a ton of stuff, uh, but she is Sissy Spacek's daughter. So if you all didn't know that. Um, And then Rachel Lee Cook and then Ellen Burstyn, plays the put upon neighbor uh which they're running a summer camp next door to her house and just destroying her life um and <laughs> which i feel about? is a continuation and is canon <laughs> of her character from the exorcist uh-huh that, that, that this, <laughs> is, this is the same character later in life being beset upon i wish we had done a who may or watch. may not be possessed by a demon yet to be determined <laughs> I wish we'd done a live watch of us watching that movie because 
the continuing <laughs> running joke like, yeah. of the fact that she was her playing her character from The Exorcist was pretty great. Um, we are ridiculous people to watch movies with, so don't ever maybe do not. It. Don't ever do it. Uh, but no, and the, the the fashion in the movie is so wild. It's so um, yeah. I, I feel like it's kind of it's in this cool little um because you've got you've got grunge but you, by mm-hmm. 1995 it's like kind of you've got that watered down version of grunge sure you know like you know a, a, after after cobain died it was just not the same <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> and, have an episode uh, about that but it's like you hadn't gotten to like kind of the real like kind of shiny really feminine stuff of the late 90s like with britney uh-huh. spears and yeah Exactly. Stuff like that. So it's like kind of right in the middle. But it's like you have hints of that. Mm-hmm. But then it's like you've also got like a very grungy flannel. But then it's like you've got a lot of like. There's a shirt that has the planets on it. And, <laughs> and it's worn by two separate characters. Yes. Multiple at characters. At different times. Wear this shirt at different times. It is a communal shirt that has the solar <laughs> system on it. And it's. And one also, of the more those are the cool baffling kids. Baffling items of clothing. Yes. Yeah, that's not worn by a nerdy character. That's worn by a quote unquote cool kid. That's like the bully, like one of the yeah, they're, wearing they're a the long bullies. sleeve button up like polyester shirt with the like, solar I'm system. I'm sorry, on. I'm not exactly like you know, it's like Miss Frizzle. I, I wasn't exactly like you know king king of the playground or whatever in elementary school. But I'm sorry <laughs> if you're gonna come at me and try to talk shit and you're wearing that solar system shirt, like I'm gonna kick your ass, like. You know, you got. You're I do want to point out. It. You're not going to bully me. I will bully you, and I'm <laughs> not a bully. I want to point out that 2021 me would wear that shirt in a heartbeat. Can I just say? Uh, I think you should do it. I, I, I say go for it. <laughs> I'm gonna find it. I'm but I bet it has it. Pluto on it, and it's not accurate anymore. I don't care. I stand by Pluto. Yeah. I yeah. Like Pluto pretty good. I don't stand for Pluto erasure. <laughs> Pluto got a raw deal. Yeah, it really did. Uh, let's let's actually watch the trailer. Well, y'all are going to listen to the trailer for the movie. We're going to relive some of this fashion. Hi, I'm Christy, and these are my friends. We're pretty tight. We even have our own club. Babysitter's Club, everybody knows us. That's because everybody uses us. I brought a little something for your little cousin. Where is he? Hi, I'm Luca, the little cousin. And you're? Your sitter, I guess. Are you going to kiss her? But this summer, a lot is going on. Welcome to our camp! (laughs) And it seems like a lot is changing. Dad? Yeah? Why are you here? I'm moving back. We're meeting different guys. Do you want to go to the movies with me tonight? Alan, get real. I am. Alan Gray likes you. (laughs) Likes her? Or like, likes her? The music in the trailer. Yeah, I feel like we're not going to be able to play the whole trailer on the show. Uh, are they gonna hit us with a copy? Oh yeah, right we probably won't. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll hit some I'll do some snippets. Um, yeah, you're gonna hear a, a probably edited version. Yeah, of an that. edited version of that because you've got the cranberries, and yes. then like what is it like? What's that one song? The is it like Dishwalla or something? It what might be that one? Dish Dishwalla. <laughs> I was trying to remember who did the that one song, that's like, and I was oh, like, "Oh, I'll just Google the lyrics." And I was like, "The only lyrics I know are." <laughs> yeah, that and uh, I don't know how to type that into Google, so uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get a bunch of I'm gonna get a bunch of tweets about the Shazam how that. I, how I <laughs> <laughs> have to play it back and Shazam it. Uh, yeah. So two bangers, yeah. We'll probably I'll probably just uh, edit that. You'll have heard a edited version, but that's okay. Um, you know, it's on YouTube. You can go watch. It. Yeah, go watch. It. You really need to experience uh, the fashion anyway. So let's, yeah, that gives you a good little sneak peek ta- of what we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, a lot of like um, floral sunflower type things. Uh, yes. You've got Mallory who dresses like a English professor. <laughs> um, at Diane Oxford, Keaton. <laughs> like Diane Keaton. Um, it's just it's a lot of fun. Uh, I think that a lot of people um, probably saw the movie even if they didn't read the books, just because it was like I think it came out in the summer. It was like a good 
family summer movie that you could like take your kids to. Ellen Burson was there for the old people, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> playing the mother and the from the demon Exorcist. enthusiasts. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I loved her in The Exorcist. Yes, I'll take you to go mm. see the Babysitters Club. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you enjoyed the movie for what it was. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking to see what 1995 was like, like, go watch this and probably Angus. Also, another great soundtrack. Oh. So, oh god, Angus is such a good soundtrack. Yeah. This the actual. So is soundtrack it? I know they. Re- movie, I know that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say the actual soundtrack for this movie sadly does not have cranberries or that possible Dishwalla song, um, but it does have letters to Cleo. It does. Um, there, it's very. It's like 10 Things I Hate About You Light is kind of the okay. uh, the soundtrack for this movie. And I was listening to it the other day when I was getting ready because it was putting me... I was like, mm, okay. All right. It was putting me in my Babysitter's Club movie feel. Like, I feel like I don't even have to look at it to know that, like, Matthew Sweet... There's a Matthew Sweet song on it. Oh, my God, I, Justin. I, I think there is a Matthew Sweet song. <laughs> Justin. <laughs> Let me... Ch- <laughs> I am... I'm saying... I'm calling it. There's a Matthew Sweet song. Okay. Let me let me let me find it. Here we go. Here we go. Oh my God! There's a Matthew Sweet song. Told you. I told you. Um. <laughs> I think he had a song yeah. on every soundtrack in the '90s. Yeah. Yeah. And letters to Cleo and uh, two songs by a band called Moon Pools and Caterpillars. Don't don't remember those. There's a don't Ben Lee them. song. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, Ben Lee. That's another one. Yeah. Yep. So I know that they have like. I can't believe you called that. I I know these types of movies. (laughs) Yeah, you do. Um. Yeah. This was this movie is a little too low rent to have Weezer. Um. Uh. Yeah. They didn't have the budget for Weezer. They all went to Ellen Burstyn. No. Yeah. All that Weezer money went to Ellen Burstyn. Sixty-five percent of like their budget budget of this movie. movie. Uh huh. Yeah. Everyone brought costumes for. Actually, the costumes were pretty great. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I will not be hearing any any negativity about the costumes. No, so the costumes uh, there's incredible. a new there's a new one though, right? So was it kind of dead between yes. like for the last twenty years? There was there was so there was just um, nothing. Well, so in 2006, they uh, there's a division of Scholastic called Graphics that does, as you can imagine, graphic novels, and they contacted Raina Telgemeier, who is an author and artist who has done several. Uh, graphic novel some autobiographical and some not for like a middle grade audience and they were like hey what do you think about adapting the first book in the series christy's great idea and making it a graphic novel so she did that and she actually adapted and illustrated the first four books in the series um so they started in 2006 i think they had one in 2007 and then for some reason they didn't do them again for several years started back up maybe in 2014 or 15 and so now there have been nine published babysitters club graphic novels um and so there have been different artists that like the first four were Raina Telgemeier and then they went to someone else uh and then they've gone to somebody else now um I think they're gonna keep doing these I think it's awesome I have them all and they are wonderful uh and it's really cool because each you know each author is getting a shot and so like the art style is a little different in all of them but they're all very like colorful and just really fun looking um and i feel like they're good adaptations of the books um Mm -hmm. and then they also uh in 2019 started adapting the little sister series so now they have those as well so now you have graphic novels of those for more of like an elementary audience so I guess kind of, a, I don't know if it was dead necessarily, but sort of just a resurgence of it. It's been um, lying dormant for a while, I feel like. It was, yeah. And then uh, I think, I feel like there was there was buzz to have a new show for a couple of years. And then it finally did happen. And there was a Babysitter's Club uh, that, that aired last year. It's a new season. It's uh, produced by Netflix. And it was 10 episodes. It has been renewed for a second season. And I think they're about to start filming it. Um, And it mostly stuck with the sequence of like the first 10 books, kind of give or take. Um, And it's been, you know, it's been updated, you know, 
it takes place in 2020. So like people have cell phones and things, but um, they also, I feel like kept a lot of, I hope that they that still s- may- meet at Claudia's house because she's the only one that has a landline. <laughs> um, they do still meet at Claudia's house. She does have a landline, but in this case, it's like, she's the only person who they have a landline phone at their house, you know? Uh, cause nobody has those anymore. And they actually, uh, so in the original like show and movie and series, it was, it was a big deal cause they had one of those clear plastic phones, you know, where you could like oh. see all the stuff inside and it was yes. like all colorful. Love those. Love those. And so in the new show, they get one and they talk about how they like had to spend like a hundred dollars to get it off Etsy, but that's their, uh, that's still the that's phone funny. that they use. So it was like a cute little like thing, but right. they still use the okay. landline phone and they all are there at one point in time um and i'm gonna put just a little we'll listen to uh it's just a short little teaser for the season you can like hear the phone ringing and i think they make the thing about they make the joke about etsy uh but we can we can listen to it now Good afternoon, Babysitter's Club. Very cool. So does it, do you enjoy yeah. the new one? Have you, I assume you've watched I it. I love it. Um, yeah, I watched it uh, almost immediately. <laughs> like I watched all of them uh, last summer. And I've actually seen most of them a second time because a friend of mine wanted to watch it with me. Um, okay. I really, cool. I really like it. And I like all the young actresses they have. Alicia Silverstone plays Christie's mom. Um, uh, Marion's dad is, you'll know the actor I'm talking about. He plays Captain Holt's husband in Brooklyn yes. Nine-Nine. Very, like, deadpan. He's, uh, what's his name on The Good Place? He's the bad guy on The Good Place. Yes. Um, he is Marion's dad. So it has some, like, really fun, <clears throat> uh, like, of the adult actors. And then they really got a bunch of, like, kind of unknowns to play, yeah. uh, the girls and... Uh, yeah, it's very fun. I have a lot of great memories with the Babysitter's Club. Well, I have had a lot of fun learning about it, and I'm excited to learn one more thing. Mm-hmm. A- and that is what we're going to do right now uh, before we wrap up this episode. Uh, Amy has sent me um, a quiz from the most reputable website mm-hmm. there is, BuzzFeed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we have... A which member of the Babysitter's Club are you BuzzFeed quiz, which I am now going to take. Uh, all right, so are you looking gonna, at this take, as well? We're going to take it live. Okay. So, you know, we'll, you'll read out the questions. How is question one, which member of the Babysitter's Club would you be well, look if at the, the quiz is which member of the Babysitter's Club are you? Yes, but okay, it says <sighs> treasurer, <laughs> president, secretary, vice president, alternate officer, or I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say alternate officer. I'm okay. going to be the Logan Bruno of the Yeah, you don't want to be committed to those weekly meetings. No, you, I'm not going. going no, I have no. to go to enough meetings as it is. Uh, <laughs> choose something you love to do. And the options we have are paint, recycle, read, sports, shop, and talk. Uh, mm. Well, it's not sports. I can tell you that. Um, Painting, nah. I mean, recycling. I mean, I like recycling. I don't know if I enjoy doing it. It's like not a hobby. Something I love. Yeah. yeah. Um, I like reading. I'm going to choose reading. Yeah. I like reading. All right. Choose a book. Here is the next one. Uh, Oh, okay. So we have. They are Babysitter's Club books. (laughs) They are Babysitter's Club books. We have The Truth About Stacy, Christy's Great Idea, Claudia and the Phantom Phone Calls. Marianne Saves the Day, Dawn and the Impossible Three, or all of them. I'm going to go Claudia and the Phantom phone calls because it sounds the spookiest. I knew you would. <laughs> well, it's got the word phantom say, in it, which is a spooky word. Yeah. Phantom's a spooky word, so I'm going to go it with is. that one. Choose a supporting character. Oh, Logan Bruno. Got We options. Logan Bruno, Karen Brewer, Sam Thomas, Jeff Schaefer, Mimi, or Other. 
Now, I, I should probably choose Mimi because you said she's awesome. Mimi is very sweet. I love Mimi. Uh, she's very supportive of Claudia and her artistic endeavors. But Logan Bruno's but choose... name is Logan Bruno. Yeah, it's a great name. Yeah, it's I'm, a great I'm picking name. Logan Bruno. It's a great okay. name. That makes sense. How do you feel about fashion? It's my life. I don't care what I wear. I wish I had better style. It's a hobby. It depends. I never think about it. I would say mm. I wish I had better style. Okay. Uh, how many siblings do you have? Just the one. Just the one. Number one. Shut up. What is your favorite decade? The 60s, the 90s, the, the fact that they didn't put these in yeah, I don't... <laughs> numerical order <laughs> fucking kills me. The 60s, the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, or the 50s. Whose well, favorite gonna... decade is the 50s? Boomers. Like... Uh, yeah. Well, it's going to be 80s or 90s. Oh, gosh. Ooh, that's tough. That's a tough one. Um, I don't know it's which I like better. I'm going to go with 80s just because of the uh, 80s horror movies. Mm, yeah, that's true. Um, I'm movies, Mary okay. Ann. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. You're kind, yet not self-assured. You tend to be quiet and shy, but you're honest and you see the best in people. I don't I don't think any of that is true except for the not self-assured part. <laughs> uh, kind, I can, nope. You're, you're, tend to be quiet, are, nope. <laughs> You are quiet and shy around people you don't know. Okay. I'll give do you, you think that. I, Do you think I'm as, as as like much of a whiner as Marianne seems to be? Absolutely not. No. Like I'm not very prone. Is. I'm not very prone to tears as often no, as not. she seems to be, just fall apart, fall to pieces as soon as anything goes wrong. <laughs> uh yeah. Oh no, my god. I, I I wouldn't peg you as a as a Marianne. You're honestly probably more of a Mallory like I am. Okay, yeah. So Annoying. You start and dressing like, like Diane, Diane Keaton. Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll know. Well, now now the world knows. Apparently, Justin is a Marianne. If only you had chosen recycling as your hobby, maybe you could have been Dawn. Man. Yeah. I know. I mean, that's not a hobby. <laughs> it's it's apparently just a thing you do. for Dawn, it is. She's like, I'm going like to sit down and like, recycle what, for a couple That's like hours. saying my favorite hobby is taking the trash out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, like, what does that mean? Like, I like, sorting, it's fine. Recycling, I like it. not having trash in my house, but volunteering you know, at a recycling center, just recycle. That's my hobby. Just, I like to just recycle. Re I like thinking about recycling. I like to just sit and when I'm just not, ponder. When I'm not actively doing it, which takes 10 seconds because you throw it in the bin. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to get, get, get some tweets about that, too. I'm sure. Um. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, I think we're done with our discussion of the babysitter. Well, fine. Club. Well, I gotta go eat. I gotta go uh, yeah. feed. Yeah, it is dinner yeah. time. Uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I have had a lot of fun with this. Uh, I, I I enjoyed learn. Like, I learned a lot in this one because I didn't really know much about Babysitters Club at all. So I've had a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. If you are, uh, thank you all so much. By the way, uh, for the kind words, and we yes. hope that you are enjoying the show, and that you kind of stick with us as we kind of get our footing and and you know sort of learn the ropes uh but we hope you're enjoying the show and uh i know we are having a blast doing it uh if yeah, you don't follow us yeah if if you don't follow us on social media uh we are on instagram and twitter at cool kids club pod we're also uh on facebook you can just search for cool kids club podcast we're also on youtube uh, you can listen we are to our episodes now, we on are YouTube. on YouTube. You can listen to the there episodes. There might be some extra content on YouTube. It won't always probably be just episodes. There might be some video we content. Will, we will post any any uh, commercial. Like, we'll have the full oh, Babysitter's yeah. Club trailer up on the YouTube page. Yep. So if you go uh, subscribe to our YouTube page, uh, not only can you get the episodes, but you can get all these sort of commercials, uh, the full videos, get the full experience of the stuff we're playing. So... Check it out there. We are on Facebook. Uh, follow e us individually on yep. Twitter. She is Amy Reads TN. I am Lousy with Ghosts. Yep. Spotify. Yes. And check Apple. out the Amy Reads YouTube channel. Uh, and check yes. out my sometimes wrestling podcast, Blue Bard Cage. And I think that's all the plug stuff we needed to do. Needed to and do. And thank you, Brian Wakefield. 
Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you, Brian Wakefield, for our wonderful song. Thank you, Brian Wakefield. Uh, th- thank you for being Brian Wakefield and for writing our wonderful song. Thank you for taking um, me to the prom that one time <laughs> that you took me to the prom, Brian. Thank you. I can't believe it only it took this long for you to mention that on the show. I had honestly not even thought to mention it. And then I thought, that was a good time to thank him for that. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm sure he's yeah. made it to the end of this hour-long episode about the babysitters. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, buddy. Uh, 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 yeah, that's all That's all I've got. All right. Uh, I'm going to go eat some dinner and maybe rewatch the babysitters club. Sounds good. Uh, thank right. you so much for listening. We will see you next time on Cool Kids Club Podcast. Bye. Bye.